Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video, I wanted to give you guys a quick rundown of what you should be expecting out of week two of the Shadowlands. Week one, there was a little bit of confusion. Um, I've seen a lot of questions asking what should I be focusing on, what's important to do, what's not important to do, because Shadowlands follows kind of a new model um, that we haven't seen since pretty much Legion, I believe where you have a ton of content, but you can pretty much do what you like and you'll be fine. Um, there's very few things that you actually need to get done every day to keep on top of the game um, as far as character progression goes. Week two of Shadowlands is very similar to week one. Besides, hopefully you have already leveled your character from 50 to 60 and got the week one stuff out of the way. So if you have done that, then week two should be a breeze for you. Um, in the second week of Shadowlands, you pretty much only have a handful of things to do. As far as weekly stuff goes, you will need to get your Torghast runs done. Um, two new wings of Torghast should open up and each of them should um, again be available up to layer three. So you'll need to do both of those wings on layer three to get the maximum amount of Soul Ash you can for the week. Besides that, in your Covenant Sanctum, you should have new weekly quests pop up, which will again require you to collect 1000 anima. There should be one that will take you to the Maw. And then once you get either one of those done and increase your renown to level 4, a new campaign quest should pop up, which will allow you to increase your renown by one more. And you should finish out week 2 at renown 6 um, at your Covenant Sanctum. And the last thing that you should be doing as far as important weeklies is obviously Mythic Zeros. The first week of Mythic Zeros is more about just collecting um, higher item level loot from those dungeons. This week, hopefully, if you've done it with the same group, you'll be able to trade a few pieces here and there to start optimizing your stats for next week when Heroic and Mythic Plus comes out. Now, as for daily stuff that you should be getting done, you will still want to do your Covenant's Callings um, that are fairly important. You can get conduits out of it and you also get a ton of reputation for them. So those are pretty good. Um, make sure that you get your Maw dailies done. And this also means doing the Jailer event at least once a week, that is on a weekly lockout. Um, so whenever you're in the Maw, you have a full week to do it and one of the times you're there, it's bound to pop up, so make sure you get it done. In the Maw, you should also get a new quest line from Venari that will give you quite a bit of reputation, so make sure to get that done. Um, but outside of that, the Maw is just going to be exactly like week one. You will get a few campaign quests in the Maw, um, and then besides that, you will just get the daily quests. Now for things that you don't necessarily need to get done, but if you have free time, why not? Um, professions week two are much easier to get up to max level. Um, if for whatever reason you were putting off professions or you didn't want to do it week one because of the math prices, week two the prices should start to drop a little bit. Uh, things will start to stabilize as the market uh, kind of evens itself out. So if you're looking to buy mats to get your professions done, uh, week two is probably the time to do it before Heroic opens. Uh, because then once Heroic opens, especially, um, some mats tend to go up in price because raiders will start buying them up. But up to that point, um, you should be fine to get most of your professions at least leveled this week uh, if you haven't done so yet. Now within your Covenant Sanctum, depending on the quest we get for the Maw that provides us with Redeemed Souls, you may or may not be able to start upgrading stuff to level 2. Um, I'm not exactly sure how many redeemed souls you're going to get uh, this week because they've changed this from the PTR or from the beta. So this means that if you get enough redeemed souls, then you can start upgrading um, the system. So either the command table, the conductor or the transport network to level two. Um, or you can start working on your like special building. But if they don't give us enough redeemed souls, then you can start saving up anima for week three when you will for sure have enough souls to start upgrading these. And which one you upgrade is kind of up to you, depends on what you like doing. The transport network will make things uh, go a lot quicker within your zone, but that's such a small thing that in the first week, I don't think it's worth it. 
um, you're probably better off either upgrading your command table second or the anima conductor second, depending on how many resources you have. Since there's quite a bit of downtime this week, um, because you don't have to level, so that all that time that you spent leveling in week one is kind of gone, you have a little bit of free time to farm stuff. Uh, as far as things that I would focus on, you can either go for legendary powers. There are quite a few that drop from dungeon bosses that maybe you didn't get on your Mythic Zero runs. So you can go in on Heroic, for example, and try to get those. Because once Heroic Week comes out, there's going to be plenty of other content that you can be doing uh, that will actually benefit your character rather than you know farming a specific dungeon for a specific legendary. Week 2 is a great time to do that on your main or on your alts if you want to. With the second round of Torghast done, you should have enough Soul Ash to complete the quest for legendaries, which will allow you to craft your first legendary. Please look up either in your class discords, wowhead, um, or any resources like that, what the legendary is that you should be focusing on. Um, for quite a few classes, your best legendary comes from the raid. So this means that you will spend week two without the legendary, but that's not that big of a deal. A lot of specs have legendaries that come from dungeons while others have them from the raid. So while you might see a few people running around with legendaries, don't get baited into crafting the wrong legendary just for the sake of having one equipped. Another tip as far as gearing goes, make sure you purchase a Dark Moon deck this week. Um, the prices have dropped quite significantly since the expansion came out, and these trinkets are 200 item level, which means that when you go into normal raid, whenever it opens up, you will be able to trade raid trinkets straight off the bat instead of getting a trinket that maybe you didn't want to use anyway uh, and not being able to trade it. A frequent question that I get is how important is Anima? Because there's quite a few world quests that give it. Obviously, most of the things that you do in the game provide you some Anima, um, and that makes it seem like it's a very important resource to have. However, it is not as important as it seems. Pretty much the most important thing you will use it for is upgrading your buildings. And that is typically gated by how many souls you have. So you could have infinite um, anima, but if you don't have enough souls, you won't be able to upgrade buildings. And the souls you get are capped on a weekly basis uh, from a quest that takes you to the mall. So I suggest whenever you have a calling for a specific zone uh, that requires you to either defend the zone or do world quests, Focus on the Anima quest first, and that should pretty much get you enough for the week to reach the 1000 uh, that you need for the weekly quest and have enough to upgrade your buildings as you get those souls um, from week to week. But as a general rule of thumb, after getting your buildings upgraded, Anima is pretty much only useful for cosmetics that you can find at the Renown vendor, uh, mounts, transmog, stuff like that. So. In general, I wouldn't worry about Anima too much, but if you have some spare time and you're doing callings in that zone, just focus on the quests that give Anima instead of like ones that give gold or reputation perhaps. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you have any further questions or want a list breakdown of what you should be doing this week, you can find it in my Discord which is linked in the description box. Also, a huge shout out to all the people who join my Patreon and support me over there. If you want it, you can find the link to that in the description box as well. And again, thanks for watching this video. I really hope you have fun this week in Shadowlands because this is kind of the last chill week before Mythic Plus rated PvP and the raid comes out. Uh, so starting next week, we should be in for a pretty good time.